Toronto and Detroit. This weekend, my stand-up tour begins with you. I've already sold out the early theater shows, and only tickets for the late shows remain. Those shows are at 9.30. That's at the Queen Elizabeth Theater in Toronto on Friday night and the Royal Oak Music Theater in Royal Oak, just outside of Detroit on Saturday night. Hope to see you there. Kill Merch is absolutely killing it. We have new drops coming and everything else is absolutely thriving there. I mean, it's just unbelievable. We've sold out and we are refreshing on everything. The store is an absolute wild success. From stickers to tickers to old American pickers. Only, Lord only knows what you will find at killmerch.com right now. <laughs> from the Comedy Mothership here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe! You guys ready for the best fucking night of your lives tonight or what, huh? Yippee! How about a hand for Red Band, everybody? Hi. Oh, yes. Mm. This is Kill Tony, the number one live podcast in the motherfucking world. You guys excited to be here? Yeah. This show is brought to you by Gel Blaster, the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Austin Security Guard Service, and uh, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, which presents the Kill Tony band. There they are, everybody. Make some noise for them. That's Michael Gonzalez on the drums. Paul Deemer on the horns. This is the great Matt Muling on the electric guitar right behind me. John Dees on the keys. And this is the great D Madness on the bass guitar. Also, for those of you coming in to visit Austin, Texas, if you need an IV drip, make sure you go to Connect Mobile Health, cmhus.com, and follow them on Instagram at Connect Mobile Health. Get an IV drip on a Sunday before a Kill Tony, or a Monday, or a Tuesday to recover, but by then it might be too late. This place is fucking wild. Welcome to the show, everybody. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. Before we start, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. The Sunset Strip Comedy Club, owned by Brian Redvan, is in downtown Austin, Texas. Check out The Secret Show every Thursday. All shows can be found at sunsetstripatx.com. Hi, everybody, and a true howdy from the dead center of Texas, where this summer has been a doozy. Every single day, it's hot and lovely, and it's worth sweating. And in order to recharge those electrolytes, Liquid IV keeps us in tip-top shape. No doubt about it, from hot yoga to the hot days of golf to the hot nights of Texas, Liquid IV is the number one powdered hydration brand in America and is now available in sugar-free. Years in the making, hydration multiplier sugar-free uses a proprietary zero sugar hydration solution with no artificial sweeteners with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness liquid iv hydrates two times faster than water alone keep your daily routine exciting with three new flavors white peach green grape and uh, lemon lime red band man those new flavors are amazing especially that green grape i love it it's great you can throw it in your pocket you can put it in your book bag so later you just put it in at one bottled water and now you have a amazing drink 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone the result of an extensive R&D process to perfect the flavor and efficiency liquid IV is non GMO and free from gluten dairy and soy liquid IV believes that access to a clean and abundant water is this the foundation of a healthier world uh, they partner with leading organizations to fund and foster innovative solutions that help communities protect both their water and their futures. To date, Liquid 
HIV has donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. Mm, no doubt about it. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Now, sugar free. Grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code Tony at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you use promo code Tony at liquidiv.com. Hey y'all, profiling, surveillance, data harvesting, there are lots of things not to like about tech giants. But what can you actually do about it when you rely on so many of their products? Well, the good news is it doesn't take much for you to take a stand. For less than $7 per month, you can join us and our fight back against big tech by using ExpressVPN or Red Band. How do you think big tech companies make all their money anyways? Well, by tracking your searches, video history, and everything you click on, and then selling your personal data. ExpressVPN helps you anonymize much of your online presence by hiding your IP address, a unique identifier that every device has that allows big tech to match your activity back to you. That's why I use ExpressVPN. One click, one press of a button, you are protected. No doubt about it. So if you don't like big tech tracking you and selling your personal data for profit, it's time to fight back. Visit expressvpn.com slash kill Tony right now to protect your online freedom and privacy. That's expressvpn.com slash kill Tony expressvpn.com slash kill Tony with the busy fall season just around the corner you might be looking for wholesome convenient meals for jam-packed days factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with chef prepared dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door you'll save time eat well and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle if there's anyone that I know that loves a healthy lifestyle it's a red band that's right I level up with gourmet plus options prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients like broccoli, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. Mm, Re truffle butter. Mm, refresh your healthy habits without missing a beat. Choose from 34 plus weekly flavor packed dietitian approved meals and they're ready to eat in two minutes. Need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel your best for the rest of the summer? Try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. This August, get factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh flavor packed meals delivered to your door ready in two minutes no prep no mess head to factormeals.com slash kill tony 50 and use code kill tony 50 to get 50 percent off that's code kill tony 50 at factormeals.com slash kill tony 50 to get 50 percent off Hey everybody, I know everyone out there is trying to have fun and enjoy yourselves. Look, it's not easy to get tickets to things. We just sold out the, all the Kill Tonys from all the way up until February in less than a minute. We broke the website. It's just how life is nowadays. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets. No doubt about it. Sports, music, comedy, theater, whatever it is. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun. Fun, you'll have a red band. I mean, locally, we got the offspring. Oh my God, Boy George is coming. Snoop Dogg. They have flash deals and last minute tickets. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. You get images of the seats before you even sit there. You get lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, etc. It's the place for last minute ticket deals. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code KILLTONY for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code KILLTONY for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Mm, mm, mm. And when I say that I love this sponsor, you have to understand that I have had this sponsor pressed against my balls, my pee pee, and my butthole every single time you've ever seen me on stage, every episode of Kill Tony you've ever watched. The best underwear in the world is sheath underwear at sheathunderwear.com. Comfortable, high quality, moisture wicking, keeps everything cool and separated. Great for working out, comfortable materials. It's hot here in Texas, and I threw away all my other fancy Nike, all the other underwears. 
in the garbage can with sheath. We we mean it from the bottom of our hearts, even Red Band. I'm wearing it right now. So for 2023, step up your underwear game, graduate from holes, loose fabric, cheap cotton, or overpriced designer brands, and buy the greatest underwear that has ever graced the balls of man. Sheath underwear, the underwear of legends. Sheath can be worn like regular boxer briefs, or you can use the incredibly high-tech sheath pouch to keep everything separated. I wear these every day, and I can tell you they are the most comfortable pair of briefs I've ever worn. Every single day. We all wear them. Everybody that from, from the show that you love, everybody has sheath underwear, from Yoni to Tony and everyone in between. So go to sheathunderwear.com and use the promo code Tony to get 20% off your next order. So once more, sheathunderwear.com and promo code Tony for 20% off. Hey y'all, I have to tell you about this super blend I'm loving called Kachava. It's hands down the best thing I've found to feed my body the nutrients it craves. Kachava is an all-in-one plant-based super blend made up of superfoods, greens, plant proteins, antioxidants, adaptogens, and probiotics. In other words, everything your body craves to feel your best. And I know what you're thinking. Something this good for me can't possibly taste delicious, but that's where Kachava really earns their thousands of five-star reviews. It tastes amazing. It's creamy, smooth, and comes in five delicious flavors. Chocolate and vanilla are my two favorites, but it also comes in matcha, coconut acai. Some folks like to think of it as a part of a healthy breakfast or lunch, but others think of it as a protein-packed snack before or after a workout. I know I do. It feeds me after I'm uh, after a long day on the golf course with 25 grams of plant protein per serving. Red band. Personally, I love to eat it right Right when I wake up with breakfast, lunch, every day, before a workout, after a workout, whenever I'm craving liar, <laughs> it makes me feel great for hours, energized and ready for my day. So good knowing all those nutrients I'm putting in my body. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? My first impression was, wow, this is delicious. I love drinking it. It makes my day better because I don't like eating. It's easy to just to pound down right before I go out. I am so with with you on that pound down to pound town. Kachava is offering our listeners 10% off for a limited time. Just go to kachava.com slash Tony spelled K A C H A V A and get 10% off your first order. That's K A C H A V A.com slash Tony. Hey, if you think you were sly skipping the ads, let me remind you that my stand up tour begins right now. Toronto, Detroit, San Antonio, Chicago. Those are just the next two weekends of my life. So we will see you there and many more dates. Check out TonyHinchcliffe.com. Support stand-up comedy. Support me. I love you. Now here's another free episode of Kill Tony. All right, we're going to have fun tonight. You guys ready to start tonight's show? Yeah. Come on. you guys. Are you guys fans of stand-up comedy or what? Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of those nights where just fucking I could not be more excited. One of my favorite stand-up comedians in the world. One of the greatest guests we've ever had. Truly one of the best. Make some noise for the great and powerful Jim North. Fuck yeah. Here we go, baby. The great Jim Norton, fresh off of an amazing weekend here at the Mothership on tour at JimNorton.com. Welcome back, Jim. Thank you. It's nice to be here, and I, I appreciate that bit of a lackluster response from the audience. <laughs> <I> would... <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun here tonight. You know how it works. Over 200 people signed up for the opportunity to get pulled out of this bucket. If I pull one of these names out, that means they get 60 seconds uninterrupted. You know their time is up, and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry West Hollywood bear, which just interrupts them. And then uh, we talk to them. I interview them. We find out more about them, what makes them interesting, what makes them different, maybe how to make their jokes better, maybe something else they could talk about. I'm pre-picking the first name out of the bucket because we already have someone on deck to start the show. He is indeed one of the regulars, ladies and gentlemen. He uh, famously two and a half years ago was broke, living in his van. Uh, since then, we've seen him make a medi meteoric? Medio 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 mediocre? Medi me <laughs> what? <laughs> meteoric? Meteoric? Am I saying that right? Yoni, why is the camera so close to my face while, I do while I'm saying a word? Is it meteoric? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, fellow musicians. Um, 
And uh, anyway, we've seen him hit high highs, some low lows. Right now, he is in a position where if he doesn't absolutely excel with his minute, the next week he is challenged by a challenger that could become the newest regular on the show. We found out that this method keeps him in tip-top shape and trying his hardest every week. Just threaten his job every single week. Starting off tonight's show with a brand new 60 seconds and an interview. Make some noise. Sing along if you know the words. This is Hans Kim. Thank you. I feel bad for the girls that have to have sex with me. Because after I finger them, they're like, well, that's the best that's going to get. <laughs> I'm glad affirmative action is now illegal because I'm sick of all these minorities in my colleges. <laughs> Call me old fashioned, but I don't think a college cl classroom should look like a Dollar General. I think it should look like the screening of Sound of Freedom. <laughs> All white people. I love how white people are so bored, they're now rescuing other people's children. <laughs> Minorities, we don't even care about our own children that much. If I got molested, my dad would be like, good. <laughs> Maybe this will make him better at violin. <laughs> Thank you. Hans Kim. <laughs> Fun stuff, Hans. I actually love that uh, finger joke that you did. Thank you, Tony. That was amazing. It's incredible that you can still kick out new funny jokes about your tiny Asian penis. <laughs> I thought we've heard them all. It's the gift that keeps on giving. And you really let the laugh come. I like that. People were laughing and you were ready to talk and you're like, no, nah, fuck it. I'm going to count down from 60. Let them laugh for a couple more seconds. <laughs> Good for you fucking molesting joke. Uh, you are terrific. I enjoyed your life. You started strong, you ended sexy. <laughs> Indeed, you really did. Did your dad try to make you uh, learn violin? or did, he, did your Asian parents make you try to do Asian things growing yes. up? Can you give us some examples of some of those things? Um, he wouldn't let me watch TV uh, at night or on the weekends, and uh, I got really mad and I punched a hole in the wall. Um, oh. Oh, shit. That's an after school special. Dad! Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. That is so, like, Asian to punch a hole through the wall. Did you think about kicking the wall first? Did you punch it like that with, like, a hand? <laughs> like, Pai Mei or something like that, perhaps? I just did it American boxing style. Ah, okay. Fuck you, Dad. Oh, wow. Wait, that was incredible. That made a sound. Do it again. I hate you. Oh. <laughs> the timing of it is just perfect. Can you guys do it one more time? It's incredible to watch you two work together. Fuck you. <laughs> Amazing. Hans Kim, what else is going on with you this week? Tell us more. I've uh, been killing it on the road. I just did a, a rally in North Carolina, which is great. It's a practice for my one minute, and then I have to fill in 59 minutes after that. Wow. Um, Where was that at? Rally, North Carolina. Okay. Did you open with the same joke about fingering a girl? That's a great one on the road yeah, to open it, with. Yeah, it was, it was in there. Good for you. For sure. But did you open with it? No. Okay, no. yeah. yeah that I don't like really, that's a, a make or break joke. They're going to love you or hate your guts for a fingering <laughs> Yeah. Girl. It's a good temperature reading. Yeah. Literally. Oh, like my dick. <laughs> when you finger... <laughs> when you finger a girl, Hans, what finger do you use exactly? I use the middle finger. Whoa, this guy's... He's going for distance. <laughs> <laughs> he's going for speed. <laughs> yeah. I fucked up. I've used the thumb. That's a real... <laughs> Hitchhiker. I figure you might go with the pinky this way <laughs> when your dick you can exceed the expectations <laughs> of the pinky. You're fucking up throwing your biggest finger out there. <laughs> Do you have to let it finger? Do you have to? Do you have to? <laughs> um, so let's let me ask you this. Your middle finger compared to your dick, what is the length and uh, width difference oh, there? Yeah, it's way bigger than my middle finger. Okay, when yeah. you say way bigger. Uh, <laughs> 
Can you give us an example? Would you would it hurt Lena the plug if you? Uh, <laughs> not everybody's on a, the TikTok out here. It's it's like a dick. It's not. <laughs> All right. Fuck. It's not like your dick, Tony. I heard some things on the grapevine. That that's crazy. You've heard nothing about my dick, Hans. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, <laughs> I, God damn it, I don't want people knowing about my huge dick. Stop it, guys. Stop embarrassing me in front of our people. It's very, very normal, guys. I'm just like one of you. <laughs> Stop with the horse sounds. Okay, there's a lady squirting in the corner right now. Hans, anything else we should know about you before continuing on? Um, I, ro- I drove my girlfriend on my moped, but she was drunk. She sort of passed out on the back. Oh, shit. Yeah. Is that a true... I thought that was the setup to a joke. That's a true story? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's... Uh, she was on there because she was sitting on my dick, and it didn't keep her on there very well. Wait, you had her in front of you? No, I was just trying to put a punchline on it. Uh, <laughs> That's weird, because if you actually snaked your dick back under you and rode a moped. <laughs> yeah, it's more like a, a ropey hard-on. Uh, no, no, it was, she was... A ropey hard-on? <laughs> yeah. What's that mean? You lasso a little cattle with it? <laughs> yeah, this fucking guy's a roper right here. He, he's, this is, his name's actually Ropey Hard-on. I don't know if you've met him before. There's a header and a healer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't know shit about shit, because I know all about it. It's called uh, team roping, you know what I mean? And You just fucking, you take the rope and you just fucking swing it around your fucking claw and then you throw it out there like that. <laughs> You see that, Jim? You I, see this guy yeah, out here? Yeah, yeah, I heard you, you talking to him, and I see who you mean. You yes. see what that fucking... He's got a stapler for a right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. I loved you in Jurassic Park. <laughs> started tonight. I love it. You do it every single week. You will not have to challenge for your spot next week. I love what you're doing. I think you're uh, hitting peak Hans Kim career style. A lot of great new stuff lately. I love it. Make some noise for Hans Kim, everybody. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. I pre-pulled the second name, and now for the first name out of the bucket tonight. We're going to meet them all together. Historically, one-word names on this show end up being very interesting characters. I feel like this is going to be interesting. Make some noise for the Kill Tony debut of Kojak, everybody. Here we go. 60 seconds of stand-up comedy, and then an interview. This is Kojak. Hey, what's up? My name is Kojak, and if you haven't seen by my pearls and my finesse, I am black and gay. Let's go, baby. I'm black and gay. That means I get in trouble when my white boyfriend brings macaroni salad to the cookout. I'm black and I'm gay. I sag my pants, but I don't want to show off my cute underwear. Hey. I'm black and I'm gay. Cam knows about that. Cam pulls his pants up when he's around me. I'm black and I'm gay. I could say figure nugget. And not get in trouble, bitch. I'm black and I'm gay. After I shoot my boyfriend's mouth, I yell, Kobe! Then I helicopter my dick. I'm black and I'm gay. I get my reparations from swallowing unborn white children. Woo, white privilege tastes so good. I can taste the trust funds. I'm black and I'm gay. All right, there it is. He's got a catchphrase, folks. Welcome to the show, Kojak. This is your first time here. I What's would up, remember baby? if I've seen you before. Uh, nice. I'm here for the horse cock. I heard a horse cock. No, before. no, 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 no. It's very, very, very tiny. Very tiny. Oh, I'm here for it. Very tiny. Nice to meet you, Kojak. I'm Tony, and believe it or not, I'm white and I'm straight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. I love it. Well, Are you really black and gay? <laughs> I am black and I'm gay, baby. Holy shit. That's What's like, up? That's like your, you might be a redneck, but instead you just say, I'm black, I'm black and I'm gay. And I'm gay. <laughs> Do you, you know that everybody knows that you're black and you're gay? 
the, yeah. with the necklace and the skin color, it is a dead giveaway. You are a <laughs> blatantly black and gay guy. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank, how long have you been you. doing stand-up, Kojak? About a year off and on. Okay. About a solid year, about a solid year. Solid year. Rock solid, hard as a rock. Hard as a rock. I'm from Philly. Okay. Anybody from Philly? No, you don't do, don't Ooh, ask yeah, your own questions here. <laughs> and how long have you been Phillying guys up with cum? <laughs> Uh, I lost my gag reflex at 14. Oh, wow. Okay. Philly's a very tough area. Was it tough being, <laughs> being gay in Philly? I mean, being black in Philly is very easy, but uh, was it tough being... Oh, yeah. I was in the hood, 22nd yeah. of Diamond, baby. Temple University. Oh, my God. Now the only time you're in the hood is when you're with an uncircumcised guy. <laughs> now well, you have the hood inside of you. My boyfriend's Puerto Rican. Oh, really? Yeah, he's cut, though. Okay. Yeah, Great. most My Puerto Ricans. Yeah, most Puerto Ricans have been cut at some point. Yes. Normally oh. by a shank in prison, but. Oh yeah, he cups. <laughs> okay, where'd you meet the Puerto Rican boyfriend at? Uh, Grinder. Okay. And you saw his uh, bio, and it just said, "I'm brown and I'm gay," and you're like, "This is gonna be good." <laughs> Were you seeking someone cut, or was that just a bonus? Oh, that was a bonus. Okay. I don't like that, all that extra. It's like a deli stick pepperoni when you had to peel the. Skin back. Well, I'll never be able right. to eat one of those yes. again. <laughs> yes. Not a Slim Jim. Yeah, yeah. It sounds I don't like put a... no thin pipe in my windpipe. Wow, you have a lot of gay catchphrases. <laughs> yeah, <he> sure <laughs> My goodness. All right. Run HIV. I like your style. This is incredible. I'm black and I'm gay. That's a lot of AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I've been dipping and diving my whole life, baby. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're wearing a tank top, but you seem like a tank bottom. Am I correct about this? I you... do it all. Okay. You do everything. I do it all, and baby. The Puerto Rican boyfriend's fine with that. Yeah, he's like a small one, small Puerto Rican. You, you like just, a pocket. You, you just had him taller than you, and you called him small. Yeah, I like him small. Like, I like it. You know when like a, a small dog mounts a big dog, and it's kind of funny. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. He's a sure. spinner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a chihuahua on a Great Dane. Okay, I got yeah. you. You don't yeah. need to name any more yeah. dogs. No, you got <laughs> I got it. It's a little guy getting <laughs> fucked by a big guy. I got it. Uh, uh, <laughs> pony on a it's horse. Like a, it's like a winter dog and a mastiff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a terrier and. A, I we got it. Yeah, we got it. Uh, what do you do for work, Kojak? I'm a, I'm a waiter. You're a waiter. Full time, baby. Okay. Selling and a, steaks. What? Selling steaks. Okay. At a steakhouse. Yes, sir. All right. Very good. How why long have you... Yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask why the name... Is that a nickname or is that your actual name? Uh, it's a high school nickname. Why they call you that? Uh, bald head, baby. Who loves you, baby? Oh. Right. Kojak from the old show. Yeah, yeah. Anybody you know. under 50. You know, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? I get it. <laughs> We're old. I look young, but I'm, 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 we're the same age, probably. Really? How old are you? Yeah. 44? Yeah, you look older. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I love it. Kojak, you live so here now? Huh? What? Yeah. You live here now? Yeah, here. Okay, how long have you lived here? About a year and a half. What do you love about Austin, Texas? Oh, I love... Uh, I got a hand job from a, 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 a twink with a mullet at, at, at the lake. <laughs> they don't have that in Philly. <laughs> okay, was his name Uncle Laser? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A hand job at the lake. Were you in the lake when it happened? Where, where? Oh, I was on the boat, baby. Wow. <laughs> Black people on the boat. Holla. Okay. Yes, they they usually are hollering for help. <laughs> Black people on a boat. You gotta love How it. How did you get the hand job? How'd you pull that off, so to speak? <laughs> uh, it was an all nude. It was a hippie hollow. So everybody was naked, so, you know. Wow, so just a bunch Hand of... jobs everywhere. Gay guys on a boat just come everywhere. <laughs> God, I'd rather take Exhausted. a submarine down to the Titanic than... <laughs> <laughs> Exhausting. I sucked a lot of dick to get here. Okay, all right. Awesome. To get here, you know, you just signed... You could have oh. signed up on a piece of paper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the guy behind the curtain wouldn't open it. You got to suck my dick or you're not going out there. 
<laughs> Incredible. Kojak, uh, you know, being gay, it seems like you guys get to do whatever you want. Was your Puerto Rican boyfriend on the boat with you? <laughs> oh, that's funny to you? I didn't know. I was asking a serious question. Uh, uh, yeah, he was with some black dude. Oh, okay. okay. We're open. We're semi-open. Okay. Yeah. Don't get any ideas. No, 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 no. I'm not. Don't worry. Um, but uh, have you ever um, have you ever had any like close calls? Have you ever thought maybe you got AIDS or something one night? HIV, whatever. I know. There's. I know you guys get like all serious about. Yeah, we got a Plan B pill for that. Oh, you do? Yeah, they cured HIV and AIDS, by the way. Okay. Yeah, nobody has that anymore. A D madness does not seem to agree with you at all. He's he. Famously homophobic D Madness. Uh, old school black man doesn't. It just will not. Will not go with the flow on it whatsoever. He cannot believe. He he is literally angry that there is a pill that cures AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> if D Madness found out that sucking a dick would cure his blindness. He'd be like, I'm good. <laughs> my fault, man. My fault, Unc. I don't like sucking dick, man. I'm just good at it, you know? <laughs> All right, Kojak. So you, Kojak, you're not going to win back D-Madness. Oh. <laughs> All right. Kojak, fun times. Congratulations. Uh, we got a little joke book for you. Actually, you know what? Since you're gay, we're going to give you a keychain. We have new keychains from Bonsai. Uh, handmade says KT go home. There you go. Kojak, absolutely. I love you guys. Thank you. Very fun. He's black and he's gay, folks. Kojak. All right, I pulled another name out of the bucket. Let's all meet him together. Your next comedian goes by the name of Alex Hamptman. Alex Hamptman. Here we go, everyone. Oh, what the fuck is up, comedy mothership? <laughs> All right, I got a question. How do you guys feel about bird watchers? <laughs> That's the right answer. I'm pretty skeptical too, right? I mean, who else do we know that likes to hang out in bushes with a pair of binoculars with hopes that they're gonna catch a sweet, sweet glimpse at a f fine specimen, <laughs> right? It's a bit of a hot take, but I think the bird watchers are just perverts on their best behavior. <laughs> I can't even tell you how fucking stoked I am to be here right now. It took me three flights to get here. And on one of them, I had this lady and she just kept trying to get me to go in the lavatory with her. And you know, don't get me wrong, I've always wanted to make it into the Mile High Club. There was just one thing wrong with this lady. She was no less than 85 years old. Now, don't get me wrong, I love cave diving in ancient ruins as much as the next guy. But I work in architecture and I can recognize an unstable structure when I see one. Alex Hampton, you think you like cave diving? You should have seen the last comedian up here. <laughs> So let's talk about it, Alex. Um, you called it a lavatory? Lavatory. Lavatory? Lavatory. Why do you call it that? That's what you're saying. What? I said, because that's what you're saying. What? <laughs> the lavatory. Okay. Yeah. You could call it whatever you want. I've heard it a lot of different ways. You can call it a lavoratory if yeah. you want to enunciate it. A lavatory. A lavoratory. However you want to. I usually just call it my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but my question is, is why are you calling it that instead of a bathroom? Because that's what they call it. Read the sign. It says lavoratory. Ah, you, now I've convinced you to go with lavoratory all of a sudden. <laughs> I've completely changed your enunciation. <laughs> I like that you started with the bird watching. A lot of people are afraid to wade into that <laughs> because we're such a polarized nation, but you're like, fuck this shit, right into the bird watching. <laughs> My, 
suggestion would be, uh, the, the, the opening line of that bit should be, I think that bird watchers are just perverts on their best behavior. That should be the opening line, and then you can kind of back the joke a little bit, but I think that's a funny thought to start with. All right. Yeah. Appreciate it. No doubt. Absolutely. Great advice. Straight to the good stuff. Um, and you also gave a lot of information on your, you said that you're stoked to be here. You took three flights to be here, but that didn't really apply to the story that you told about the old mm. lady. Um, how, where did you come from to where it was three flights? I flew all the way here from Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that is an unbelievably, <laughs> the people here in this room tonight think that things are farther away than they actually are. <laughs> I flew from a far away land. The 39th state of the United States of America. <laughs> three flights. So dude, was that just cost effective to take the three flight? $11. $11? No way. Miles and $11. Wow, look at that. Incredible. Which flight did the old lady want to fuck you on? Yeah, which leg of the flight was that? Yeah. San Diego to Austin. Yeah, you should have done it for the story. That would have been a great opening line. I fucked an 85-year-old woman on the way here. You got my attention. 85? 85? I mean, is that's out of your range? I cut it at 76. Okay. Wow, that's very patriotic of you. <laughs> that's his range, 17 to 76. <laughs> <laughs> Too much fun. But an 85-year-old doesn't have a chance with you, huh? Gotta be real hot. Wow. Or, or just take your dentures out. Okay. All right. Look at you, you dirty fuck. Uh, Alex, what do you do for work? Uh, I'm an architect. Ooh. Yeah. So is that guy on Long Island they just arrested, that serial killer? <laughs> oh, I didn't hear about this. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. an architect? Big hulking architect, yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. That was a bad answer. But you're in good company. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. And how long you been doing stand-up, Alex? Uh, about a year. Where at? In Oregon. Where in Oregon? I, I'm, I find it strange that you just keep calling by the state. <laughs> Central Oregon in Bend. Okay, like Eugene? No, no, Bend, Oregon. Oh, got ya. <laughs> got ya. Yeah. Uh, how far from Portland? Two and a half hours. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about Oregon except... <laughs> I figured I'd chime in. <laughs> um, what do you do for fun out there in the middle of fucking nowhere? You're two and a half hours away from a dumpster fire yeah. called Portland. Uh, mostly mountain bike and snowboard. Hey. Okay. What is your love life like? I just broke up with my girlfriend. How long were you with her for? Four years. Four years, and you just broke up with her. Why? Two months ago. What made you break up with her? She two was months. 72 when he met her. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. Man, she couldn't bend anymore. <laughs> no, she fucked Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So what made you break up with her two months ago? Four oh, years together. We moved to Oregon from California, and she wanted to move back to California. Where in California? L.A. Okay. What made you move from L.A. to the middle of Oregon? Because I went from a studio apartment to a three-bed house with a garage for the same price. Right. A three-bed house with a garage in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. Mm, don't knock it till you try it. No. <laughs> I'm going to knock it, and I'm never going to try it. <laughs> I like a thing called civilization. I think socializing is good for the mind. Who do you hang out with out there? Is it like a little Beetlejuice town? There's just a guy sitting outside of a shop. You just ring everything in yourself and walk out like, see you later, Pete. <laughs> He's just talking to himself. No, I hang out with all the homeless people that live in the desert out there. You have homeless people in the desert? Oh, yeah. Wow. Did you move during the pandemic? Just at the end of, yeah. Oh, okay. You like property values were a little low, so you decided to go there. Locked it down. And then yeah. the world opened up again, and you're like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> yeah, why am I here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I find it hard to believe that there's homeless people there. Do they not know about the incredible property value rates that are happening there in the middle of nowhere? I don't know. They're really in a position to take advantage of that. How much would a studio apartment be there? Eighteen. Eighteen dollars? Hundred dollars. 
that seems way high for being two hours outside of Portland. Yeah, it does. It seems really high. It is. So you're with your girl for how long? Four years, Four and you years. broke up because she was in Portland or Oregon for a little while, and she was just like, "Fuck this." We moved there together, and then she wanted to leave, and I didn't want to come back to California. Oh, ah, okay. So did she go back to California? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, how did you break up with her? Did you sit her down face to face? Were you at dinner? Was it in the morning? Were you in bed? Were you in the yeah. shower? And she was on the toilet. Like, what's the setup here? Paint a picture for us. Uh, or did she so break up with him? You might have been looking through Eros, <laughs> Los Angeles, and seen a hooker ad. Oh no, she's going home. I, I should just shut up. <laughs> No, I was a gentleman, and I drove her down to California, and then we got her, got all the stuff unpacked from the car, and I was like, well, see ya, and drove back up. <laughs> Wait a second. She didn't know that you were breaking up with her? It was, there was some rumblings of it, and then it was she, official. What, did she not wonder why you were loading her possessions into a U-Haul? <laughs> did she just go everywhere with all her shit? <laughs> Most interesting thing about you before we let you go, Alex? Uh, I grew up in a meditation cult in Iowa. Meditation cult. Tell us more about this meditation <laughs> cult. I'm pretty sure the last comedian was probably raised in a meditation <laughs> cult as well. Uh, yeah, it's called Transcendental Meditation. And uh, yeah, I used to meditate before and after school every day at the top floor of my school with all my classmates. That's really not that horrible. Sounds nice. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's actually like... It, 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 Why are you calling it a cult? Yeah. Because it's pretty culty. Everyone wears beige all the time. Everyone's houses face exactly the same direction. Everyone's vegetarian and very bland. <laughs> not exactly Koresh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean... All right, meditating. What was the? Did anyone ever molest you or anything? <laughs> that's that's how you know it's a cult. Yeah. I got I got out when I was fourteen, so I escaped that. How long do they wait to molest people in this cult? <laughs> Jesus, what fucking lazy pedophiles! <laughs> I'm not fucking that kid till he can drive over here. Uh, come on, get it, use the produce while it's still good. You know what I mean? Fourteen. <laughs> I love it. Alex, uh, congratulations. <laughs> Fun times. Um, here's, a, uh, here's a little joke book for you, my friend. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Good catch. Shot the bank. Thank you. All right. <laughs> well, there goes Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something. Something has happened here which uh, I cannot believe. I know for a fact that this young lady has signed up for the show a few times. Over the many years that we've done this show, there has been a few times where she has said, or Red Band has told me, you know who signed up tonight? So and so. And her name has never, ever, not once, been pulled out of the bucket. And right now, for the very first time, it has happened. I can't believe what I'm about to say right now. Ladies and gentlemen, making her Kill Tony debut, Red Band's girlfriend of over seven years, Janet! Oh my God. The Kill Tony debut of Red Band's girlfriend. The place is in chaos. Definitely about to happen. We're going to wait until she arrives. She's probably gonna try to roast me, right? No? The real deal, ladies and gentlemen. The first lady of Kill Tony. This is Janice, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck? Okay, uh, so my mom is super. My mom is super religious, and uh, she doesn't believe in gay people. So, <laughs> so I was like, okay, mom, what would you what would you do if I was gay? And she was like, I'd stuff you back into my womb and make you come out all over again. <laughs> and I was like, damn, mom, that's pretty gay. <laughs> So 
so I have hemorrhoids. <laughs> and <laughs> sorry. I was like, so if you have hemorrhoids, it really sucks going to the bathroom, like poop in the public restrooms. Because of. Because, you know, those one-ply papers, they don't really work out, so I have to take a... Uh... Anyway, so I've, I've come up with this method <laughs> where you spit on it, and that's what you do. But the only problem with that is that every time you go to the restroom now, your, mar your mouth starts to water. Oh my God. Our sweet... Little Janice with, with, was without a doubt, as far as the bucket pulls, the set of the night so far. Absolutely incredible. I mean, that was amazing. Uh, it's so funny because I literally asked you guys in the green room earlier, I go, how long have you two been together now? And it's over seven years, right? Amazing. Janice, welcome. This is so surreal to see you I over know. there. <laughs> and our opening joke told us that you, your mom doesn't like your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. So let's get right into it, Janice. Uh, how long, what made you want to sign up for the show? How long have you wanted to do this for? Well, I've, you know, I've been watching this show for like over seven years. I've been years now. Yeah, you knew about the show before you met Red Band. You yeah. like slid into his DMs, right? right? Yeah. Look at that. What was your look opening at Red line? Band getting. Look what he gets in his DMs. This fucking guy. And it was Snapchat DM. What the fuck? Oh my goodness. What was your opening line to Red Band? Hey, I think you're cute, but forget about anal. <laughs> anal, anal was involved. <laughs> wow, Janice, you're fucking. You're good at this. I've been watching for a long time. Adorable. I love it. The gay joke was hysterical. That's pretty gay. The hemorrhoids thing. I mean, I didn't know hemorrhoids. Was, you could catch that from your boyfriend. That's incredible. <laughs> didn't realize that's an you, STD. You, you now. rip tears in the asshole lining, it starts to happen more. Ooh, okay. Thank you, Red Band. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Red Band explaining how hemorrhoids work. So Janice, what else is going on in life? Tell these people about yourself. Uh, well, I, I like to crochet. I like to sew. I like to do things with my hands. So I like to do all the things the little kids in China like to do. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. She made us all new iPhones for Christmas. It was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And you are, you're Chinese. Korean. Oh, okay. I should have, I should have known that. I should have known I would that. never, Tony. Would <laughs> oh, okay. <good. laughs> Korean. Absolutely. So, uh, that's fun. And you were born and raised where? Here. Right. In America. The greatest country on planet Earth. Um, okay. How do you like Austin? I mean, it's great. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Uh, tell us, uh, what do you do for work? Uh, I just had my last day of work. I'm... Uh, Retired. Yeah. Perfect. What'd you do? Just menial jobs here and there, you know. Okay. So do you do stand-up regularly? No, this is my first uh, ever real set. How about a hand for Jim? Wow. All right, we're four minutes and 52 seconds into the interview, so let the fun begin. Tell us what Red Band's body looks like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> describe it to us, because he seems like the guy that swims with a t-shirt on. I want to know more. <laughs> I want to know what's going on. How many <laughs> belly buttons does he have? He has one just like you. Oh, yes, we're all completely equal here. Now, uh, how's sex with Red Band? I have to ask, or else the people will say that I pussied out. So, can you describe, uh, does Red Band have any special moves in the bedroom? <laughs> does he move at all in the bedroom, yeah. I guess is a better question. He, he's actually, like, I'm impressed every time. How? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Who's my 
my little baked potato. This is my sweet little baked potato. Yes. Cardio is very, well, it doesn't, very it, impressive. It, it doesn't mean she comes. She's just impressed. <laughs> <laughs> He just keeps trying. I like the attitude. <laughs> oh. No, his, his cardio is impressive. What? Yeah. No, now I know you're lying. No, 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 I'm serious. <laughs> this is incredible. You just quit your menial jobs. We know who's pay- picking up the tab over here. Oh, yeah, he fucks the shit out of me. Um, I mean, he just dicks me down like you wouldn't believe. I love it. Is wow. he a is he a giving lover? Like, uh, is he more, care about your needs more than his own? Yeah, to the point where sometimes I'm like, just chill out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Get well, your head out of there. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we know no one loves eating out more than Red Band. <laughs> he, he, he had to hit his own pig sound effect. <laughs> I've never seen his hat pulled this far down, by the way. This is incredible. Freaking me out. <laughs> it is, there's just a nose hanging out underneath the brim. He cannot see anything right now. He has the same visual range as D-Madness for the first time ever. <laughs> what an epic moment this is. I mean, you have been with the show through, um, I mean... I've, I've had, what, three or four relationships through the entire time that Janice has been here. Rock solid with you. It is amazing. Can you tell us, uh, what do you love about Red Band the most? It gay. Is. Yeah, I know it's gay. <laughs> are, are you sure you want to do this? Whoa. <laughs> I don't know whether to be sincere or not. Be sincere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is the sure. time to be sincere. Uh, I, well, Wait, I love that he's like a sweet oh. person, kind person, but also that he he al- he's always just done his own thing, and he's very like firm in that, you know. And you know, it works. It's worked out really well for him, so I'm proud of him for that. Oh my God! Oh my. How cute! Very oh, nice. Can, I, can yeah. I ask, what do you love about him the least? Ah. <laughs> oh, it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Janice, you're a fucking natural, dude. You know what? Next week, you're challenging Hans Kim for a regular spot. I've been pulling the strings the whole time. Fuck you, Red Band. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a fucking not not the first time two Koreans have battled. Uh, it's going down next week. This is incredible. Same. Kim versus Min. Pad versus Tai. Oh boy. <laughs> General So versus Kung Pao in a battle of the titans. Janice, you are so naturally likable and funny that it is absolutely incredible. Uh, I'm excited to see a new minute next week. It ha- we have to do it. You're Thank you. you. Very, very special. So sweet. What an amazing performance. And you know what? You're getting a big joke book. No doubt about it. There you go. And a gel blaster. And I'm pretty sure you can perform on the secret show if you want. <laughs> First time Red Band hasn't invited a girl to the secret show. <laughs> That's a cock block, Tony. Woo. Fucked me up, by the way. That really fucked me up. Oh, my. That, that could not have gone any better. I'm so glad that she did so good. Because that could have been fucking awkward as hell. This show's crazy. Anything can happen. I'm pre-pulling a name for one pull from now because we have a special treat for you guys. Uh, We have a golden ticket winner, famously from five or six years ago, uh, out of Phoenix, Arizona. He now lives in New York. 
Golden ticket winner means that when we're doing a road show, uh, if we find someone absolutely extremely exceptional, they can perform a minute on the show anytime they want for the rest of the history of the show. So this guy is now visiting from New York City. We found him when he was, oh my God, we found him the day before his 21st birthday. 20 years old when he started on the show. He's so fantastic. Make some noise for the Mothership Kill Tony debut of Golden Ticket winner, Tristan Bowling, everybody. A legend of Kill Tony. Oh, how the fuck we doing, Kill Tony, huh? Yeah, who here's tried to kill themselves, huh? Yeah, me, I have, I have pills, pills. Not like, bah, like you'd be, You'd be able to tell. Uh, if I was just up here visibly inspiring? No. Uh, no, I was thinking, this is why I think, I was thinking about it, I think this is one of the silliest ways to kill yourself. Uh, hear me out. Uh, and tell me if you like it. So on Halloween day, on Halloween day, you blow your brains out in your front lawn with a bowl of candy in your lap. And then all night people are like, his decorations are nuts. Like that's <laughs> kind of funny. Like, <laughs> like you make the news, if not world star hip hop, for sure. <laughs> for sure. He's like this white boy wildin'. Like that's <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah. That's exactly how he does things, Tristan. Bowling. Uh, Another amazing performance. Yeah. I'm black and I'm gay. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone done that yet? No. Uh, <laughs> that was funny, man. Really funny. I, I love a good suicide joke, and it went somewhere really hilarious. Great Thank joke. you, bud. Thank, it seems like we've been down the same block, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it's, screaming into a gun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, singing. I sing into one. I don't scream. <laughs> A thespian. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's a part of LGBTQ now. Thespians? <laughs> it is true. A lot of stand-up comedians kill themselves. Never the ones we want. Yeah, not yeah. enough. Yeah. Turns out there's not a rope in the world strong enough to hold up. <laughs> we have to bleep that because that's a stand-up <laughs> joke that I do now. Anyway... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Tristan, how old are you now? 25. 25. Yeah. I love it. And you moved from Phoenix to New York how long ago? Uh, eight months. Eight months eight ago. Months. You were always uh, my Phoenix opener, always super consistent, one of the amazing towns. Phoenix actually has a really good crop of comedians yeah. coming up there. There's also Luis, Luis Alvarez, Alvarez. Yeah. freak of nature. Yeah, he's um, great. And uh, so let's talk about it. How's New York been treating you? Because you were depressed. Your suicide jokes come from your time in Phoenix. I remember you. Oh, yeah. You've always been a, had a little chemical imbalance. It makes sense. I mean, it's, w life's got to be weird when you look like both the pedophile and his victim at the same yeah. time. They don't let me in school zones, Tony. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Even though you have class. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm teaching you. Get the fuck out of here. No, uh... No, nah, it's it's nice. I uh, I, st I do a lot of uh, I do I've been doing mushrooms during the day. Ah, yeah, yeah. Just going to Central Park, staring at other kids' kids. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, cool shit. No, nah, it's it, it's it's awesome. It's aw I've been eating I've Wait. been eating so many hot dogs. Okay. I love it. You just are you you eat the bun too? No. Oh yeah, I put it in my ass first. <laughs> no, yeah. it's not, it's not <laughs> <what's>, <laughs> Eating so many hot dogs, I thought Kojak was back up. <laughs> <laughs> the old wiener schitzel. Yeah. Are you depressed anymore or are you better? It fluctuates, you know? There you go, folks. That goes to show you the power of hot dogs, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm, if I gobble a glizzy, day's changed. I, I, it puts a little pep in my step. When was the last time you had a hot dog, Tony? I don't eat those anymore. <laughs> Why, are you too straight for hot dogs? No, I don't eat bread and the thought of eating a hot dog. Oh, so dog. you're gay? You don't eat bread? No, yeah, totally. That's what gay is, by the way. Everybody knows. I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually had to march in the parade because uh, I'm no bread. It's LGBTQNB now. I'm the NB. No bread. No bread. Gay as fuck. 
Yeah, just crying out in front of a Wetzel Pretzel. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> this guy roped me at one point. I was fucking, hey. just trying to enjoy my gay parade. All of a sudden, there's a rope around my neck, and a guy has me in a rear naked choke with a uh, by the by a rubber band. Uh, yeah, he's got you in the grasshopper hold, dude. It's fucking hell yeah. Okay, so Tristan, <laughs> tell us about New York. How's it going? What's happening? Um, it's dope, dude. I'm uh, I'm having a lot of fun. I, I I do a podcast out there. If you don't know, is it Final Stop? Eh. Okay, but, sure. Final yeah. Stop. Is it about suicide? Uh, do you know what? <laughs> it sounds. Yeah, it's just me going around New York, being like, "This is the best bitch to drum from." Like, <laughs> a lot of people don't know you can get from the World Trade Center straight onto some dude's car. All right, let's like, let's go. Let's really talk about this suicide. Um, how did you try to kill yourself? Oh, Are you just, asking me or him? <laughs> 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 Just taking a lot of pills. What kind of pills? Uh, it was a Xanax, uh, Ritalin, Phylloxetine, and Buspirin. Oh, so that's just balance you out at the end. Yeah. Xanax, I, Ritalin, you're just having a good old time. Yeah, I was the most effective I've ever been. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Isn't Buspirin kind of, uh, like they call it Buse Bar, right? It, it's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I take that. Like it's, it's, it's very mild. It's just kind of a very mild. Uh, yeah, that's why I took all of them. Oh, and, you took a bunch. Yeah, too. yeah. They was like, I, these are little, but quantity over quality. I'm taking what I got. Like, so, so what happened? Tell us about it. You're by yourself. Are you at your parents' house? What's with, going on? With mommy and daddy. Oh boy. Um, yeah, hanging out at mommy and daddy's house, and uh, you know, just they saw I was pretty bummed going upstairs, and they're like, Tristan keeps his pills in his room, right? And they're like, yeah. And it's like, that's eh, bad. And then uh, were you heartbroken? Did you just like? Yeah, yeah. I went through a pretty bad breakup, yeah. and I was just like blindsided by it, and it was super public, and I was like crying in public, and I'm just like, I need to go home and kill myself <laughs> immediately. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, rad. Um, How did they find? You? Did you give any indications? Like, did you say good night, mom and dad? I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go get some eternal rest. I love you guys. Good night. Yeah, I'm gonna go hang out with Grandpa. Catch ya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How'd they find you? What happened? Uh, no, I was. Uh, they were like, I pretty much came home and was just a wreck. And I'm like, nah. I'm you were erect. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, which, what side of? All right. Yeah. It was uh, Xanax. Gotcha. But blue. Okay. Chew. So you were erect. I was erect. Right. And you're, you're like Hans Kim on a scooter at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just fucking a little pogo stick. And my my dad, shush, that was too loud. Uh, my dad, uh, my dad, he came in and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, nothing. And then he was like, see, let me see your pill bottles. And then he knew how much I had. And then compared to how much he's like, you need to vomit now. And then I was like, I'm not fucking vomiting. He's like, it's either vomiting or going to the hospital. And then I did the other one. So You went to the hospital. Yeah. They did had he to try like, to shove his finger down your throat? No, but I wish he... I mean, is that a bad dad move? No, but I've had it. I, I, I took pills, and my father said the same thing. You gotta throw up, and I wouldn't. And then he fucked my mom in front of me. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> no, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Felt better already, Dad. Yeah. He thought you were wrecked when you came in. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you now. <laughs> so you went to the hospital, they pump your stomach? Yeah, and then I went to the psych ward afterwards. How long were you in the psych ward for? Like four days. Four days. What yeah. was the highlight of the psych ward? What was the worst part of the psych ward? The highlight, I'd say great ice. They have great ice for eating. And, uh, ice? Yeah, yeah. As ice. in frozen water? Frozen water, like the little sure. popcorn ball Sonic ice. Sonic ice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And the... They do that so that people don't try to choke themselves on it? Yeah, I guess so, but it's like a snow cone. It's so good. I, wow. I was just chomping down things of ice. I did almost get raped, so that was it. <laughs> Tell yeah. us more about this. Tell yeah. us about the raping. This is Kill Tony Gold right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I was, it was not fun. Uh, it, I was, I, it was my roommate, who uh, his name was Rakesh, and uh, you can uh, just assume what he looks like. And yeah, <laughs> I do believe. Uh, yeah, I yeah. do believe that's Kojak's current boyfriend. Yeah. 
And like he would wake up and just he would just be around with morning wood all day. And then uh, he used to I would be asleep and he'd be sitting on my bed and like touching my leg and shit. And just love he was like, You bringing me cigarettes tomorrow? And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, I love you, Tristan. And I'm like, Oh shit. This is going too well, quick for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was the ice good enough to make you go back and chance it? <laughs> now that I hear it's at Sonic, I gotta I keep stop going back. Like, I didn't know that was Sonic ice. I thought that was buttfuck ice. So then <laughs> I've been chomping down on. Did he try to force it, or was he just kind of trying to seduce you? He was trying to... He got handsy. Uh, he, he got handsy with it. He, like, kind of came in for a hug, squished the buns a little bit. Oh. To, touch... Yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. gay dueling banjos in there. Yeah. Jeez, Rakesh, this is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> handsy in the psych ward. All right. <laughs> that sounds like now a let's, novel. Now let's hear some of the good news of your life. Let's hear it. Uh, that was the good news. <laughs> <laughs> you should you should see what it's like for the guys that aren't trying to get raped. <laughs> yeah, and twice as bad for them. Uh, no, it's, shit's going great. I still got my girlfriend. You know, she okay. moved with me from Arizona. It's in New York. She fucking loves it. She's Emily Paris in New York, and I'm like going to Brooklyn Mike's, being like, my dick is getting stomped. <laughs> and it's a it's a lot. Yeah, they stomp your dicks there. It's fun. Uh, no, but just doing what. St- Stomp dicks? It's like an emotional dick stomping, you know? You just go to open mic and then just have a bunch of... These kids nowadays, they use terminology that I don't get. Red Band knows he's got a Discord server. I mean, that's something different. I've watched videos of girls stomping dicks, but you're talking about (laughs) something totally different. Good old cock and ball torture. (laughs) Tristan, very fun times. Always a pleasure to have you. You're an absolute rock star. Thank you, Uh, It's fun to watch you come up through the ranks. Very, very hilarious all the time. I'm excited for you that you've made it out of Phoenix to a real comedy city like New York. And uh, I think you're going to continue to thrive. Congratulations. Thank you, bud. You'll never need to try to kill yourself again. Yeah! Tristan Bowling, everybody. Give it up for Tony and Slicky and all you guys. I love you. Five-year veteran of the show. All right, now we're going to meet somebody else. That's how we met Tristan five years ago, just pulling a name out of a bucket. Anything can happen. Make some noise for your next bucket pull. Riel Silva, everybody. Riel Silva. Come on, these people wait all day for this. Make some noise for Riel, everybody. What up, everybody? Y'all been thinking about your health recently? Because I have. I've been trying to cut back on the drinking a little bit, try to eat a little cleaner, because I feel like there's a fairly high likelihood that our future doctor ate a Tide Pod. So I think our future health is more in our hands than we wished it was at this point. Speaking of health, I had COVID twice. My immune system really let me down over the last few years. I never got the quintessential symptom, though, of loss of taste. Totally. Everything just kind of tasted like um, pierced nipples. And for those of y'all who don't date trashy women on the regular, if you ever have the misfortune of wearing jeans here in July and you have, like, loose change rattling around your back pocket, just give one of them a little licksy. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I gave up on dating apps, man. Dating in Austin's trash altogether, but dating apps are the worst. I go to Target now, because in Target, there's 10 girls for every one guy, and they're already in there looking for shit they don't need, so you might as well bring me home too, right? (laughs) Thank you. All All right, Riel Silva. Hello, welcome to the show. Am I saying that correct, Riel? Yes, sir. Okay, how long you been doing stand-up? About six months. Where are you at? Mostly in Austin, Texas. Is this where you live? I do. For how long? I've been here a little over two years. What do you do for work? I work in tech. What do you do exactly in tech? Uh, EHS, er, EHSNS, Environmental Health, Safety, and Security. Okay. Yeah. So you have to like show up to an office every day at 10 a.m.? Basically, yeah. You get off at about 5? That's about right. Okay. What do you do for fun? Uh, I shoot archery. Um, I do stand-up, obviously, a little bit here and there. And, uh, hey, Joe Rogan's not here. Tell us what you really do. <laughs> I, I used to shoot archer on the pro circuit for like three years. No, it's not—it's a small niche, but I did. Where did you come from? Uh, Monterey, California, Westwood, California. Did a little time in Reno, Nevada, Little Rock, Arkansas. I was a military guy. Oh, okay. You're stationed in Reno. I was. All right. You—you <laughs> you were in the military yourself, or your family was? I was. I've been in for twelve years. Okay. Yeah. What? What branch? Air. 
Air Force. Yes, sir. That's Hell the yeah. smartest one. I went to Iraq years ago with the Air Force and uh -huh. like, uh, to, to entertain troops, and you guys get the best food. Air Force, they take care of the fucking pilots. That's the best one to be in. I did, I did fly C-130s, actually. So, yeah. yeah C-130s? No, C-130s, yeah. Yeah, that's what took us around. They did those combat takeoffs and landings. Oh, yeah. Four fans of freedom, 16 blades of justice. Fuck you lost yeah. me there. I don't know what that means. Damn. <laughs> Jesus. All right. 16 blades of justice. My God. It's incredible. What ethnicity are you? Uh, my dad's a white guy. My mom's Brazilian. Mom's what? Brazilian. Brazilian. Yeah. Okay, yeah. They usually use real? 16 blades of justice over there, too. <laughs> So I'm told. What were is, you saying, Jim? Is it real Brazilian money? <laughs> uh, it might be. I don't know. The economy's crashed a couple times over there, so I don't no, know what they're it, using. Isn't a real a denomination of Brazilian? I think so. Yes. There you go. I've never yes. been to Brazil. I can't, I can't confirm. So oh, like I they're have. pretty sure, yeah. though. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> real, uh, what's your love life like? You seem like a good-looking guy. You talk really fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, am I that nervous? Uh, honestly, since I've been to Austin, it really has been trash. Like dating here is awful. I've been when on a few. When you say date dating here is awful, what exactly do you mean? Uh, it's like all of the drawbacks of like LA without all the perks of LA. So like, no one's really anybody, but everybody feels like they're somebody for the most here? part. Here? Oh yeah. Does anybody feels like they're? But you think LA people are somebody, and they well, don't I mean, feel like I, I feel like I feel like in LA, I mean, there's like a lot of people who are like at least working and film or acting or music or whatever but like people here I don't feel like really do that much do you specifically only like dating artists uh, oh this guy's leaving he's storming yeah. out right now look at this he's heard enough look I'm at this somebody fucking... yeah oh, I do paper goodness. towel commercials god damn it <laughs> it's the Mexican brawny guy everybody <laughs> browno I don't know. Yeah, it's just it's it just hasn't been great. I, I've I've gone on like seventeen third dates, and that's about where it ends. So this is so interesting to me. What is it about these? Like, what's? Can you give us an example of a moment where things are kind of going good? You kind of like the girl, and she says something, and you're just like, "This is over." Give us an example of a deal breaker with okay, Re Riel. Okay. Okay. So, uh, like the last girl I went on went out with was an Instagram model. Uh, and, you know, again, somebody probably, not somebody, but felt like she was somebody. Um, I mean, those are the somebodies nowadays. That's true. I mean, Instagram is probably the biggest modeling agency there is now, I guess. Yeah. But any, anyway, so she, we went out on like, probably, actually probably four dates with that one. And on the fourth date, she was like, hey, you know what? It's been great. You know, I've, re I've really liked all this time that we spent together and everything, but I just don't think I'm over my ex. I shouldn't have been on the app, you know, all this stuff. I'm sorry I drug you through, but I, I, I think I, I need to figure myself out. Oh, so the biggest turnoff that you've seen so far is when a girl has no longer wanted to see you. <laughs> that's fair, right? I mean, I feel like my what? type... <laughs> Dude, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> I asked you what a girl has done in which you're like, no, oh, I can't be... This girl doesn't have a chance with me. And you gave us her telling you that you don't have a chance with her. I, she wasn't really not over her ex. She just didn't like you that much. It's a lot easier way to say it my <laughs> way, though. Yes. <laughs> With the rare, he barely ever speaks, but he just gave a hard, yup. It's out of nowhere. The nicest guy in Austin, Texas is like, fuck you, Riel. <laughs> did you think it was going well? Is that why it kind of came as a shock? I did. I did kind of yeah. think it was going well. But, I mean, then again, I, I guess my barometer for people is... Uh, led me astray a few times. Did yeah. she hit you with it on the fourth date? Or, like, did she go on the fourth date and then at the end of it go, by the way? No, very beginning of the fourth date. Like, we didn't even get to, like, order anything. And she was like, hey, by the way. Where were you at? Where, what restaurant did you go to? This could solve all the problems <laughs> right here. You didn't even get to order. We're yeah. there in line at McDonald's, yeah. and yeah. she wouldn't even... Uh, to be completely honest with you, I don't even remember the name of the place. It was kind of over, it's on East 6 over by like Latchkey and all that. I don't really remember the, the joint. Was it Mexican food? No. Um, I was pretty excited to have fish and chips. I remember that was on the menu. Ah, fish and chips. What do we got? What do we think? Fish and chips. Perfect date Oh, food. revelry. <laughs> Could have been revelry. Fish Could have been. What happened after she said that? Did you continue to order? I ordered a beer and then I think finished that and probably went home. Left her there? Well, I mean, she had left, obviously, before that, you know. Before you finished your beer? Yeah, she was like, you know, whatever, whatever. Okay, all right, well, see ya, handshake, I don't know. 
And then I was like, oh, I guess I'll have a. And beer. you're like, fuck women. I'll have a Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Riel. <laughs> Any other fun facts about you? Any other special skills yeah. or talents or anything else crazy we should know? Um, like I said, I, I used to I used to fly. Um, I uh, again shot archery. I um, you say archery one more fucking <laughs> yeah. time. I'm gonna have Tristan dump his pills down your throat. <laughs> um. No, I, I guess I guess that's really the only uh, the what only. What are you scared thing. of? What scares you? Is there anything that scares you in this ooh, world? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, you know, I wouldn't say I'm like scared of bees, but I don't I don't fuck with them. Like you know, bees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he bees, likes big dude. tits. <laughs> yeah, bees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody fucks with bees, dude. Well, the hell I are especially you talking about? don't fuck with bees. I don't know, like. They're just flying around. They got fucking death darts on their ass. Are like you thinking of wasps? Death, death darts? You think bees kill They killed people? Macaulay Culkin. Oh, my God. Okay, you're getting a little joke book. You're getting out of here. <laughs> there he is, Riel Silva, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, some people are booing him. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. Oh, wow, the crowd is turning on the young comedians. Pulled another name out of the bucket. Let's see what happens here. Your next person, we're going to meet them all together. Ty Marion, everybody. Ty Marion is next on Kill Time. Here we go. I recently went vegan. I think it's making me gay. <laughs> it's before I started this diet. I never really liked sucking dick. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like black chicks. I like black chicks so much that when I jack off, I only come into black tube socks. <laughs> Cats are weird. <laughs> you scratch a cat up by his neck and his eyes will get real close. Move your hand down his back a little bit, his eyes start to open. A little more, a little more. And a cat's eyes will damn near pop out of their head when you get all the way to the end and you jam your thumb up their ass. You can try it. <laughs> Any racist here? <laughs> cool. Bad news, the leader of the KKK, KKK recently died at the age of 77. So now an ironic twist of fate for him, everything is black. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Ty Marion. Welcome to the show, Ty. How are you. you? I'm doing well, sir. How are you? Absolutely. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Three months. Three months. Okay. All of it here in Austin? Yes, sir. A little right. bit in Dallas, but mostly here. I love it. Jim, what would you think about that? I, I enjoyed the fact that you just kind of, like, you tell everybody, like, I'm gay and I like sucking dick, and then you just end it by going, just kidding, and then you move right on. I like that. No segues at all. I don't like sucking dick. I like black chicks. Kidding. Cats. I like cats. You fucking use your time wisely. That's yeah, my point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What's going on, Ty? I don't know. There's an X on the ground, man. Yeah. That's, that's how they got Kennedy, right? Stand. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. I think the X came later. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. I've been there to Dallas. I don't know. Shit's marked straight the fuck out. It's an easy target. You know yeah. what I mean? He like, didn't even dodge once. He's just chilling. <laughs> okay. You know, back and to the right or whatever. What do you do for work, Ty? What kind of an electrician are you exactly? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that funny. Um, <laughs> I'm actually a personal shopper. Uh, I basically help elderly people getting their groceries, Target. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little bit like the prescriptions, mostly. Okay. Yeah, you have to go like, through a background check, but they don't check very well, obviously. So I like to go to the doors because most of them are older and hard of hearing and shit. And so I'll lean on the door, like on the doorbell, and just bing, 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 and they're coming. And then they'll, you know, you hear them rolling. God damn, I'm coming. Shut the fuck up and shit. <laughs> and when they get to the door, they're like, God, you, you I fucking saw me coming and yelling. Where am I? And thank you. You have a good day. And so I just pretend that I'm deaf the entire time, so I don't know that I'm on there. 
It's just a fun game I like to play. Sure. Yeah. It sounds awesome. It's fun. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I'd try love that. To participate with you. Yeah, try. You could try that. You could try the thumb with the cats. <laughs> I only tell true stories, you know. So. What ethnicity are you, Ty? You have a very interesting look to you. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, mo I'm basically white my mom's side has some Native American in so that kind of just helps with a little bit of darkness and, uh, yeah. there is a touch of darkness there are you really a vegan? no Oh, okay. you're fucking, I mean, you guys can tell I'm a little overweight up here and oh shit, no you're fat yeah. Yeah, yeah fuck yeah. yeah you know what I mean yeah. goddamn food trucks <laughs> fuck that shit but you can get fat eating vegan food that's enough mm, no Three can. And so you just have to eat a lot of it, like well, pumpkins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Wait. a lot of carbs. Yeah, it's Pass. carbs. Uh, Vegan vegans can be fat. Sure. But uh, if you stop eating bread, you're gay. So I mean, it's a <laughs> it's a risk risk reward. You know what I mean? Uh, so let's talk about it, Ty. What do you do for fun? What what what? And you're when you're not doing stand up comedy. Well, I tried to make it on TikTok during the pandemic. So one of the things I like to do is, because everybody has like ADD on there. And you're, just, and you're like, no one has the brown down syndrome market. I'm no, fuck unfortunately it. not. Uh, I would just write like 10, 15 second songs, you know, four to eight bars just to kind of keep them in. Can you give us an example of one of the songs? Uh, all right. Uh, first off, do we have any Spanish speakers here? Hell yeah. I, can I, I'll do a Spanish original. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't want yeah. them to feel illegal alienated or anything. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right, this is an original. Y'all might know the words. Sing along. Oh, la verga. Ole way. You pinche puto. Chinga tu madre. Thank you. Okay. Can you do, can you do, one, in, can you do yeah. one in English? Yeah, absolutely. Here's an English for you guys in case you didn't know what that one is. This one is uh, called Sweatpants. It was based on a situation that happened at H-E-B. <laughs> oh, lumpy butt. In them sweatpants got a funky butt. Your panties all bunched together and shit. Now it looks like your back tuck and your dick got a lumpy butt. Wow. You did, none, of the, none of these took off on TikTok? No. <laughs> no, I... I Guess not. Did you stop doing them? <laughs> no, I still come up with them like, like they just kind of like shit that happens, and I'll be like, oh, that'd be a funny little jingle. You yeah. Know, so you see all these people going viral during the pandemic doing yeah, crazy and you stuff, know, and then you do this and it's like, just a lot of this and shit, and it's like, oh, that's two million views. What the? F yeah. What was the most views one of your songs got? Uh, actually, it's not one of my songs. I went viral for an inappropriate post that I had on there. Um, I got like, like it's like like 400,000 views. So we all know what H-E-B is. Yes. They had these wooden swings that were on sale. The last one had a Dallas Cowboys logo on it, which is fine, we're in here in Texas. And so when I, I filmed it, and I made a little video, and I said, H-E-B has these nice swings on sale, and for Pride Month, they also have one for the LGBTQ community. And that was the one with the Dallas Cowboys logo on it. <laughs> ah. So, yeah, there I actually was, think I may have seen that. Maybe. It was a big uproar. Uh, apparently, it's really offensive to, for some to be called a Cowboys fan. You're a very funny guy, Ty Marion. Appreciate for it. three months in, you are well, well, super duper on your fucking way. Here's the big joke book. I like your style. You're a great writer. I love your deadpan delivery. You have a silly looking fucking weird ass face. I think you should sign up come back again give us another minute there he goes Ty Marion everybody alright this should be our last bucket pool of the evening make some noise for Laura Ortiz everybody Laura Ortiz is next on Kill Tony hot bitches in the audience tonight right hot bitch hot bitch sir hot bitch hot bitch hell yeah I believe all hot bitches have stomach problems, right? Yeah, that's why so many guys want to fuck my dog, apparently. Yeah, dating is not going well. <laughs> my therapist told me to get the dog, actually. My therapist told me, get the dog, it would help with your anxiety. And now I gotta get a therapist for my dog because this bitch has anxiety? No joke, this bitch, she has separation anxiety. So what she'll do is she'll cry all day tear up my apartment and take a shit in the hallway. 
just like me. I've never felt so seen. It's great. It's great. I love my dog. I love it. Every day, coming home to shit. I love it. <laughs> I saw a kid's bike on the side of the road the other day, and I could really think of two ways about how this bike got there. Either someone stole a bike from a child, awful, despicable, or someone stole a child from a bike. <laughs> Either way, that kid's fucked, right? <laughs> Thank you. Laura Ortiz, everybody. Laura, welcome to the show. How are Hi. you? Good. Anxious. How Nervous. long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, on and off since 2017. Oh, boy. Yeah. All right. I uh, know. Terrible. I'm sorry. It's, it's hard okay. to do a minute. It's hard to do a minute. It is. It's also kind of easy if you've been doing it Time six years. I know. It's kind of easy. It's okay, it's, Laura. It's my, I know. It's my fault. Of all the people with those glasses and that haircut, you're the funniest. <laughs> Yeah, huge victory. <laughs> I love it. What do you do for a living? Uh, right now, I am a busser. A busser? Yeah. You're a bus girl? Yeah, bus girl. Bus oh, boy. my goodness. Wow. Yeah, not going great. Well, how'd you end up being a bus girl? Um, I could not find work as a graphic designer, because that is what I went to college for. Art oh. degrees are terrible. Oh, boy. I always, <laughs> yep. I, uh, my, yep. Yep. I, I can't believe college still exists. It's it unbelievable. <laughs> Did you really expect anything else from these glasses and this haircut? Yeah, yes. barista. Uh -huh. <laughs> or a blogger. You look like a blogger. I lost the barista job due to anxiety. Really? Yeah, I got anxious that I would burn the customer. Oh, shit. What, I, I, by mistake? Or? Yeah, <laughs> just by gripping the cup too hard. <laughs> oh, Jesus, my. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a glass. <laughs> 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 you're crazy is my favorite line ever in the history of the show. Oh, shit, you're crazy. <laughs> so simple yet so perfectly timed and beautiful. Yes, to be demoted from a barista to a bus girl does take a high level of, uh, of not being able to fit into society. Tell us more about your awkward highlight reel. Um, well... <laughs> The, uh, on Wednesday, my Ooh. therapist told me that she is paying for me to get tested for autism. <laughs> Your oh. therapist voluntarily is paying. Yeah. yeah. How much does that cost? Don't they just throw toothpicks on the floor and if you can... <laughs> I wish I had the genius kind. I really did. <laughs> Apparently, there's two types: the genius kind and then me. <laughs> uh, I think you're absolutely adorable. The fact that you can laugh at yourself in these ways and own it, and and you don't, you seem completely unaffected by the lack of laughter throughout your set. And you know what I mean? Like you seem to be having yeah. fun. It seems like you love doing this. How many times a week do you like get up and perform? Um. With this job, it's only been like once a week here lately. Right, because you're busing at night. Yeah, busing at night, Damn. so it's a little bit hard. So Damn. I have to really try and pick my days. And wow. Why are you so anxious? Um, I grew up with very controlling parents who just told me that everyone's judging you all the time, and now I think everyone's judging me all the time. So, so you decided to go into comedy where nobody will ever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You signed up for a show that has a million viewers that were in a table of judges, literally. <laughs> it's very autistic of you to do. Like, uh, yeah. I You're wanna... autistic, by the way. Tell your therapist to save a few bucks. <laughs> Amazing. I just wanted to take control of the narrative for once. Absolutely. So, yeah. I love it. I like yeah, your style. I like your attitude. Tell us more about you, Laura. What else do you do for fun? Uh, for fun, I draw, photograph, uh, watch a lot of anime. Is that really surprising, given uh, what I look like? No, that makes sense. Yeah. Let me ask you this. You're, you're busting tables, which leaves you with the inability to perform at night. If you could have any job, what type of job do you think you are qualified for, other than graphic design? Um, I think I'm, I'm gotten better at my anxiety so i think i am ready for that barista job again yeah oh wow <laughs> that's right but only only like cold brews you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm a summertime employee all right <laughs> only cold drinks oh my god that is hilarious what uh, what else other than a barista because these are such entry-level jobs how old are you 
Uh, I am 29. 29. So yeah, it's time to it's time to amp it up. I'm gonna try to figure out how we yeah. can help you. So give us one more job. Ooh, that, um, that's I'm not re- something that any 18 year old off the street could uh, beat you out at. <laughs> I'm really good at brand strategy, analyzing what a brand is and what they speak for and how that uh, relates to the market and how that relates to an audience and really analyzing like, okay, you're trying to hit this demographic. This demographic is into these hobbies. This is where you should be targeting them on this social media platform and not X other social media platforms. Yeah, you're autistic. <laughs> I mean, that's what most bus boys uh, do. <laughs> What's an example? So, um, in college, I worked on this hypothetical app called Stasher, where you're supposed to, like, sign in and keep your luggage at, like, a random cafe if you have, like, a long layover or something. And so we were targeting, like, travelers, people in their late 20s to early 30s with lots of money, you know. And uh, I think the project turned out really good. Wait, were there people who would actually leave their luggage in a cafe? Yeah, if it's a locked room. Oh, okay. It's one of those Interesting. Things. So it's they like, get a little bit of the money, like the yeah. cafe would get a little percentage. Uh, yeah. That's okay. actually a really interesting business model. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why wouldn't the people take their luggage with them? They just want to like go out for a Han- bit. Hands free. Like if it's like an eight hour layover in like Atlanta or something, and you want to spend the day looking at something in Atlanta, you don't want to carry. Did that app end up succeeding? Is that still out there? Uh, I think it still <laughs> exists. There's people just cracking I up know, at the right? idea of Stasher. <laughs> Just yeah. laughing about how they would yeah. never leave their bag in a fucking cafe. <laughs> I left my luggage at Pete's Coffee House. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't know what the future is for them. I know they're mainly located out of the Northeast uh, area. You seem like such a sweet girl. You seem so employable. You seem like you should not be a bus girl at all. Yeah. I'm trying to Aww. figure out, is anybody out there hiring for anything cool during the day? Yeah. This guy just raised his hand. I think he just wants to fuck you. Yeah. What are you hiring for, sir? Yeah. Uh, up in San Antonio, we need uh, Castroville, Texas, actually. Yeah. Oh, I you're going to get murdered. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, exa- actually, yeah. I know exactly where that is. What's the job? A hostess at Juliana's restaurant. Uh, no, restaurants aren't going to cut it. We need a day job. Anybody hiring for a day job in this booming Austin economy? Yeah. An app creation, maybe? Abortions at Dunkin' Donuts or something? (laughs) Hot and ready. Oh, that's Krispy Kreme. (laughs) Come on, somebody's got to be hiring. This would be such a magical moment if we could find her a job right now. Anybody? Nobody needs a brand fucking something? Nobody wants to increase their company? What, What is it? What do you think? A new university? It, wow. It, it took me eight years to graduate from college, dude. I don't think I could do another 12. Wait, well, hold on. What kind of university are you pedophiles starting back there exactly? It's called the University of Austin. Oh, that's a real original idea. This is yeah. good. You guys like fucking with us right now? Because you do, you guys look like nerds, so I'm guessing you are starting, it seems like you would start a college. Can you actually offer her a job or no? I'm not in a position to offer her a job. Oh, Jesus. Bunch of pussies out here. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you and fuck your fucking university. Exactly. I'm going back to Trump University. Fuck you. Yeah. You know what? We serve cold brew at the Sunset Strip Comedy Club. We might be able to get you a, 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 a barista job. Wow! <laughs> Look at that. Turns out the booming economy was sitting next to me the whole time. <laughs> it's a barista job, and it's during the day, and you could yeah. also like do mics, too, while you're working and stuff. So. Yeah, there's comedy shows oh there. You can work at a comedy club. Does that sound fun? Yeah, that sounds really fun. All right, send me a message on Instagram. There you go. You just got hired at the Sunset Strip Comedy Club here on 6th Street. Your set was so lackluster, but I find you completely likable and charming, and I'm giving you a big, cool, new Kill Tony joke book just for you. Laura Laura Ortiz, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. That was 
fun. Yeah. All right, one last bucket pull. Make some noise for your final bucket pull of the night. Joel Runyon, everybody. 60 seconds uninterrupted for Joel Runyon. Here he is. I just, uh, I just beat the, the worst video game of all time, guys. Not to brag. Maybe you played it. It's called Bumble. I don't want to spoil the ending for anyone, but if you just swipe your way all the way to the end, it's a big yellow wall of disappointment. It says, that's everybody. Not a great ending. I'm just kidding, I don't play video games. I don't like dating apps. Dating apps don't work because women will put one thing on their profile and guys think it means something completely different. You seen this, yeah? Like women will put a photo of their face in a filter and they think it makes their skin look great. But when a guy sees it, we just immediately know that's the insecurity we're gonna have to put up with for the next three weeks. <laughs> women will put a, a phrase like, I'm not here to play games, please don't waste my time. And they think it means they're setting healthy boundaries. But when a guy sees it, all well, we're thinking is challenge accepted. <laughs> but the best part is when a woman will put a a photo of far off vacation, a boat, or my personal favorite, a private jet. It's a long way to get there. You, you want to finish it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they think it means I'm fun, adve I'm adventurous, I love to travel. And when a guy sees it, all we're thinking is, who are you fucking that has a jet? <laughs> all right. Go. Joel Runyon, everybody. Your final bucket pull of the night. Joel, I feel like I've seen you before. You've been on this show before, correct? Yeah, I went way too long that time, so. This time? Last time. Last time. Brought it back a little bit. You went way too long both times. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like the opening joke. I thought you were a little, you seem a little hesitant and a little, I know it's nerve wracking, yeah, yeah. but uh, you should, a little, maybe a little stronger on the delivery, like a little more confidence in yeah, what yeah. you're saying, because the, you know, the line wasn't bad. It was a good joke. Yeah. How long you been doing this? Uh, like two and a half, three years. All of it here in Austin? Yeah. Okay. Is this where you've always lived? Uh, I lived in Chicago, San Diego, but started doing comedy in Austin when I moved okay. here. Okay. What do you do for work? Uh, I run a business called Impossible. Okay. What's Impossible? We do uh, like performance uh, supplements and formulations. So we have like an energy product, a sleep product. You sell an energy product? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> is the sleep product just uh, your set with headphones? <laughs> we include that free of charge. I bet. Hard to, hard to sell that. Um, Joel, what have we not talked about? Oh, we haven't talked about a lot of stuff. Uh, well, last since time. you were on the show, I mean, there must have been something in which you're like, wow, that would have been good during the interview portion of Kill Tony. Yeah, uh, I'm getting sued by a $10 billion company. Ooh, you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why are they suing you? Uh, well, we, we won it once, and then they're appealing it right now, so... Yeah, they're going to uh, win that. You have the lawyer off the buses, the rock and roll lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> the lawyer rock, so. <laughs> Your chances of winning that case are impossible, by the there way. You go. There you go. Why are they suing you? Uh, so, we have... My company's called Impossible, and then... Uh, Theirs is called Impossible? Theirs is Impossible Foods. Oh, yeah, you're fucked. You we won it once. They got it kicked out, and uh, they're appealing it. So They have that trademarked? Uh, we have it trademarked. They're trying to cancel ours. Yeah, impossible is a fucking word we all use. I don't know how a company can claim that, and they have foods at the end of theirs. Yeah, you might actually have the right of way here. They didn't trademark the word impossible foods? No, we have a 12-year-old incontestable oh. trademark. Oh, sorry. Uh oh. Uh. All right. <laughs> thought you were in for more legal trouble. <laughs> All right. Joel, tell us something else interesting about you. You're being sued. What else? Um, we talked about ultra marathons last time. Ugh. That was fun. No, I, don't, I don't think it was. Red Band said I was lying about it. but Well, we found out today that Red Band has perhaps better cardio than you. So. Yeah? <laughs> Mr. Ultra Marathon. There you go. And the only marathon he goes to is the gas station. <laughs> I don't. Never. No, I don't go to a gas station. He never goes to gas stations. <laughs> never. 
He's Never. the Tesla guy. <laughs> yeah. That gets Postmates all the time. That's right. No need for a gas station. That's right. No need to grab like one of those little sausages. Sausages. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, Joel, what else? What's your love life like? You seem like a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. Uh. Well, a rapist would not know how to respond yeah. to that. If you weren't a rapist, there would be many responses that you I've could got, give. I've got enough legal troubles. Don't right. You? Exactly. Can't, can't get into rape. Right. It's not a, not a good look. Um, I'm, I'm working a lot right now, so all day intermittently, but okay. uh, kind of stressed out a little bit. Yeah. What do you do to resolve your stress? Uh, I work out a lot. I, uh, I do ice baths. Okay. Do they help? I've never, I, I've never done one. I yes, I find I like I need an outlet to send all my energy. So the ice baths. The ice runs. that you're bathing in is that crystal meth. <laughs> you can try that. Okay. Joel, you've been on this show before. It was good to get you up here. Good to see you again. You got a little joke book last time. I had a little joke book last well, time. Well, you know what. I'm going to upgrade you to a slightly bigger than little joke book. This is, this is about a half an inch bigger. This is a new level that the great bone size brought in. He's brought in different sizes. You won't believe it. Look. Yeah. But you're getting there, Joel. You slowly but surely. Joel Runyon, everybody. There he goes. All right. Now here's the deal. Some of you guys are going to be... Very disappointed to find out that the great and powerful William Montgomery is stuck in Hawaii, everybody. And you're going to be disappointed to find out that David Lucas is retired from the show and stuck in Atlanta tonight. And you'll be disappointed to know that the great and powerful Brian Holtzman has another gig on the other side of town tonight. But you will be thrilled to know that your final comedian of the night is perhaps the greatest, most potential regular we've ever had in the entire history of the show. He's only a month and a half into his regular ship, and this guy is the talk of the entire comedy club, probably the most hyped up guy in the entire city right now, and he delivers all the time. Even with an intro like this, he'll still come in over the top, likable, thunderous, different, he can translate his street style to even the whitest, oakiest, most boring looking white people. There's a lot of you out there tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you who I truly believe is the future of Kill Tony, one of our finest regulars ever. Make some noise as loud as you can get for the great Cam Patterson. That nigga arm oh, crazy as shit. Beautiful. <laughs> you can't put that nigga right there. That's kind of crazy. Uh. <laughs> Fuck you, nigga. We not the same, bitch. Uh. <laughs> I used to work at a grocery store and I, I hated it, dog. Cause there's a lot of people like, <laughs> like y'all there, you know? <laughs> a lot of y'all, too many of y'all, but it wasn't like y'all, it was like y'all parents. Like, we had a bunch of old white people, like, old to the point where, like, I think they remember when slavery ended. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how old they was. And there's a lady who would come in every day and she was in a wheelchair and I always help her and I hated that bitch. <laughs> because every time I would help her, I would think that she thought to herself, this just like the good old times. <laughs> and one day I helped her, right? And she was like, thank you so much, Jeffrey. Are you behaving yourself? <laughs> Now, y'all know my name is Cameron. Who the fuck is Jeffrey? So I stole that bitch wheelchair. Thank y'all, yeah, yeah. Beats on, beats on beats. An unbelievable appetite for destruction. The kid is different. Cam, how old are you again? 24. 24 years old, and you've been doing this how long? Two years. And how long in Austin? Oh, uh, like three months. Three months in Austin, yeah, a real yeah. comedy city. Yeah, Two yeah. years, most of that in Orlando, yes, which sir. just simply isn't much to do there. 
Nah, but go to Disney World, but that's not the same though. You know what I'm saying? If you ever go to Orlando and you go to Disney and you think that's all in Orlando, come to where I'm from and I'll show you it's not. Yes, sir. Oh shit. Talk, What's bro. it like? What are we missing out on? Niggas die there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, I'm into it. You would it. have a good time, gay to your nigga. You would love it. <laughs> I like your tattoos, nigga. No problem. Hell yeah. <laughs> Great Can't. timing. Yeah. Great timing. And I love that you ended on that joke. And you knew, I knew you wanted to say something else, but you're like, fuck it, that's a big laugh. Yeah, yeah. And you had great instincts to take the Hell laugh. Yeah. Really funny. Yep. Thank you so much. Exactly. Yeah. Knowing when to get out is a huge part of... Usually, again, something that people learn years and years and years in. You seem like a fucking natural all the time. Everybody talks about it. All the comedians talk about it. It's a very fun thing. It inspires everybody all the way to the top comedians that come here. Everybody lives vicariously through that. It, it reminds them that there's people coming for all of our jobs that, oh, uh, that we have to keep writing and working and fucking focusing. It yeah. pushes everybody. Uh, tell us how life's been the past week being Cam Patterson. It's been good, man. White people been giving me a lot of rocks and shit. Yeah. The rock thing is taking off. Yeah. I saw, I got tagged in something. Oh. Somebody reposted that thing from the tenure in it. I don't, I mean, I don't, that I'm not big on fucking numbers and stats, but there is a clip that blew the fuck up of you talking about rocks. Like, you got famous as fuck this past oh, week. There's people coming up to me like, I heard you like rocks. In front of police, they're, they're like, this nigga sell yeah. crap. He got to sell crap. <laughs> There's no Jim. way he just have rocks in his pocket. Yeah. This nigga has crap. <laughs> Listen, if you see a police officer close to me and you come to me like, I heard you like rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you got rocks in your pocket. Leave me the fuck alone. You know what I mean? <laughs> But I will take y'all rocks, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I like them. I do enjoy them. This fucking no kid loves rocks. I do. Jim, just to catch you up, uh, he loves rocks. He has. He keeps actual, he finds rocks and he keeps them in his pocket. Look. Look at those. Wow, wow. those are actually beautiful well, fucking they're rocks. Curtis gave me those. He gave me those. Humans, yeah, those are... I can tell these aren't the street rocks that you <laughs> yeah, were used yeah. to. Well, there's one street Look, rock. Look, you can tell you can tell he's getting rocks from girls that are like, this one yeah. means energy and power. <laughs> yes, yes. This is fucking money, all right? <laughs> this is gonna make you money. This looks like a kidney stone. Yeah, that's, uh, that's somebody that's probably picked cat that turd. rock. Those are his rocks. You can tell the rocks that he found and the ones that were given to him by one of these fucking Austin girls with bangs and bad tattoos. You can just see. Why do you like rocks? Is it Jesus? I like how they feel. We're going to do this shit again. Oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. Shit. I just like how they feel. You oh, text it oh, yeah. yeah, I'm like, I might be, I might got a little tizzle. You know Maybe, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a touch. <laughs> Sprinkle. A smidge. A little shit, you know what I'm saying? I might be a little, you know what I'm saying, retarded, you know what I'm saying? And you've said they help you fall asleep and stuff. Do you keep yeah. them in your hands when you fall asleep? Yeah, I keep them in my bed and shit. Okay. And I wake up with rock, right, man. I, 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 there's a good yeah. time. Wow, look at you. Bedrock. Yeah, bed. Talk to him. Hell yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. What a great thing to collect. You'll never be able to not collect that. Like yeah. some people like fucking cars or jewelry, just rocks. You'll always have access to that. Whatever. Well, yeah. I'm mad. I see a rock. I like that one. Sure. That's a good one. Yours for the taking. Yeah. It's mine. Good Nobody going to tell me I can't have it. No. Nah. I. I, I get the feeling that when he gets as rich as we all think he's going to end up being, he's probably going to spend money on fancier rocks. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to take a vacation to the Grand Canyon, right? Give me, give me half of that right now. He's I want half go. of the Grand Canyon. That's what I want in my yeah. house. He's going to spend that money, I can tell. <laughs> I've been telling Cam. I've been naming him professional athletes that got famous quick. Like I like t we talk about it at night at the bars. I just start naming people. I'm like, now don't you be a Maurice Claret now? Yeah. Because you could be a, very easily turn into your own thirty for thirty with that how shit, I see things going. That shit would suck. Yeah. <laughs> that shit would be horrible. You're a juggernaut, man. You're setting the standard for what it is to be, uh, what the level is of a door guy here at the mothership, of an opener here at the mothership. You were on a lineup last weekend in which I thought you, you know, I've seen what you do on this stage doing a full set. I had you on 
my show here, and it was incredible. I mean, just that type of nonstop, absolute laughter. And this guy's doing the opening spots because he has to be there right now. But, I mean, it is so undeniable because I saw the two comedians after you weren't getting the same exact thing up until the headliner, uh, the, the second opener, and then the feature act. Just they don't have the same absolute demand for continuous laughter throughout. So you are on a trajectory that is completely undeniable. Uh, how do and you unique, very unique subject matter. Talking about rocks, I've never heard a person. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny and it's you. It's great, yeah. really original. Yeah, and and like I said, it translates to everybody. Like I'm looking at some of these Texas just straight up racist white men in the audience, yeah. <laughs> and when he's performing, they're just cracking up. You're like, God Look damn it, one nigga. of the good ones. Yeah. I, I like this. Nigger. I like this Django ass motherfucker. Hell yeah. <laughs> now I love y'all crackers too, dog. <laughs> y'all my favorite whites, you know what I'm saying? The feeling is mutual, Cam. The feeling is mutual. Uh, I mean, you're an absolute star. Thank you so much. So pumped for next Thanks. week. We're going to so keep much. it going nonstop. Yeah, yeah. Cam Patterson, everybody. <laughs> And that was this episode of Kill Tony. Did you guys have fun? How loud can this place get for the great and powerful Jim Norton? Goddamn motherfucking right. The drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt is in. It looks like that. Make sure you check out Jim's tour dates at jimnorton.com. He's going to JFL. He's got some crazy gigs coming up all over. Of course, uh, my favorite fucking radio show, Jim and Sam on Sirius XM. He's on The Degenerate Season 2 on Netflix. One more time for Jim Norton, everybody. He's the fucking man. Thank you, Jim. Truly one of my favorites in the world. Such an honor to have you here. Thank you. Let's check out what the local artist Chris Rogers drew tonight. Oh, new Hans Kim. Fireman Hans Kim. How about one more time for the Miss Sam Band in the land, the Kill Tony Band. Michael Gonzalez on the drums. Paul Niemer on the horns. D Madness on the bass guitar. John Dees on the keys. And Matt Muelling on the electric guitar. Some very exclusive Kill Tony merch available only tonight on your way out. You have a chance of getting that. You cannot get it online. You can only get it in the lobby here immediately after the show. So if anybody's interested in that, that's a thing. Uh, and yes, thank you to Gel Blaster, the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Austin Security Guard Service, and Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, Number One Tequila, and the IB Drip. Red Band, check out the Sunset Strip Comedy Club next door, sunsetstripatx.com. I love you guys. HEB Center, it's 75% sold out for New Year's Eve. It's going to sell out in the next few weeks. It's going to be an unbelievable weekend of incredible Kill Tony debauchery. So, for those of you listening around the world, this is truly your last chance to get tickets for New Year's Eve. The first ever Kill Tony in an arena here in Austin, Texas. You guys, thank you. We love you. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much.